One theme that was carried by some outlets, both mainstream and online, was that this year's budget was a, I quote, Robin Hood budget. Referring to it as such pits one group, high earners and the rich, against the lower and middle classes. If Singapore does not do more, a threat that has loomed large on the horizon in the last few years of the potential emergence of two Singapores may become reality. One, Singapore is connected to the world as a hub economy. It is where high salaries and opportunities abound and where locals, and crucially many foreigners too, power diver diverse nodes of the economy. This Singapore gives meaning to the promise and lure of Singapore and how we remain relevant to the world. The other Singapore is one where the majority of Singaporeans live. It is one where there are perceptions of slowing social mobility connected to the reality of high housing prices. Today, the prospect of upgrading to a condominium or a landed property, unlike in decades past, is not as realistic for HDB homeowners. Buying a car is an out-of-reach luxury for most people, unlike in many other countries. I have also heard it summarized this way. In the past, you may not have done well in school, but if you were prepared to slog and save, you could become rich and successful. Today, the view is that once you have not succeeded academically, even if you slog for years, success, let alone wealth, may not follow. These two Singapores could easily become a reality that causes frictions in society. Singapore is a tiny red dot, and both these Singapores would unavoidably rub up against each other. As much as the government endeavours to keep society open and bring new businesses and opportunities to Singapore and Singaporeans for the greater good, it is that second Singapore, where a broad middle of Singapore lives and works and plays, which should never find itself unmoored and cynical about the future of Singapore. To combat both the perception as well as the reality in some quarters of two Singapores inexorably emerging, redistribution must be at the core of government policies.